welcome to the channel for the first time viewers welcome back from my existing subscribers i want to take this uh time to talk to you about what i have done um to increase performance in warzone right specifically warzone some other games have benefited as well i've put countless hours into tuning my ram timings you know i started off with the corsair kits you know read through some forums found out they weren't the best as far as when you're trying to tune them and get some uh lower latency you know like dig down to like cl14 and you know better speeds like that so i went ahead and shout out to the homie uh frame chasers so i'm gonna link his video and his channel in the description but this is where you know i learned a lot about things like b die um and i don't know if you've been in any of my comments recently you may have noticed that i said hey you know i'm tuning this b die kid or i just got b die um, when it comes to warzone my highs are incredibly higher it is insane so same exact setup different kits of ram um and i'll do my best to kind of explain what b die is and why you should want to get it when i was looking at ram i spent about 320 on those um cor the corsair kit it's a good kit of ram right if you just want to turn on x and p and roll with it it was decent but i wanted the best performance especially when i had a 3090 and a 6900 xt and i really wanted to max out the performance that i was getting and when it comes to warzone i knew that my ram was what was holding me back i also knew that you know i had some issues with switching components a lot and that might have been causing some of my lower lows like when i would get on a 3080 i would get like 130 fps at times um, and i knew it wasn't normal so i never really accepted it. i always try to troubleshoot and reinstalling windows fix a lot of that stuff for me but when it comes down to this uh this b diagram right let's talk about that real quick so a kit of it was 120 um and that's 16 gigs right and <clears throat> i ended up getting two of them for uh, obviously fast math <laughs> 240 um, so I got two kits of them on Amazon during Black Friday, and usually they run about what I paid, and this is no discounts, nothing, uh, about what I paid for uh, 32 gigs, right? And this is, but the difference is the way you can tune these sticks, it's kind of like, the best way I can explain it would be more if you had a 10900 versus a 10900K or 11900 or a non k skew cpu that you couldn't overclock right so they can take higher voltages and right now um the first stable overclock or not really overclock i underclocked it um the the kit i got was 4400 cl19 right the corsair kit and obviously there's no rgb it's patriot vipers i'll link it in the description if you want to take a look at that i'll also link the um the b die finder site where you can look up whether or not a kit you're looking at is B-Die or not. And it tells you, you know, some are B-Die, none are B-Die, um, or guaranteed B-Die. Like when I looked at the Patriot Vipers, it said 100% guaranteed B-Die. Um, and it was the same for the lower tiered kit. But the reason I went with the higher um, higher tier kit, the because there's a 4,000 megahertz at CL19, I went with the 4400 CL19 because it was like $20 difference. I've told myself, you know, I'm not going to spend this. I'm not going to save the 20 bucks. Let me just start if there is any kind of difference. And this is just me being maybe naive, but if there is any kind of difference. I'd rather start high at the 4400 and work my way down um, and have a higher ceiling possibly. First stable overclock I got was uh, 4000 megahertz at CL17. Now, getting this thing to boot was a bitch, right? You could not just turn on XMP. You could run it at stock so 2133 megahertz you could run it at that all day um but obviously who's, who's buying these type these types of kits to run at that stock speed um so what i did is you know i looked online found a couple of timings to try something to start off um, but i couldn't get it to boot uh, in a lot of the different configurations i was trying but what i did end up settling for was uh, gear one uh command rate two so 2n and i was able to do 4000 megahertz and 17 17 17 and 39 were my timings going on a little further <coughs> excuse me going on a little bit further i was able to you know further tighten the timings and one thing i found is higher speed at a higher latency so 4400 megahertz at cl19 is not necessarily going to be faster than 4000 at cl17 you know what I mean? So that bandwidth changes. So you might be, you might have somebody with uh, running their RAM at 3,800 megahertz and they have more bandwidth than somebody running at 45 or 4,400, right? 
So it's all about the the timings and getting those down because what's happening is it's cycling through that data much faster. And essentially that's, it takes more voltage to do, but because it's B die, it responds well to the higher voltages. So I'm not like damaging the chips, right? The out of the box, it was set to be rated at the CL19 4400F 1.45 volts, right? So that was the XMP settings. And if I only had two sticks, I could actually just get this flip on XMP and exit the BIOS. But because I used all four slots on my motherboard, I had to manually go in and, and try all these different configurations. So where I'm at right now is I am running at 3733. I'm still in gear one, which is the fastest um, gear mode you could choose. I think it goes up to like three or four now on the Z690s. I think it might just be three. But um, the command rate one is the fastest, but you can run into stability issues where it doesn't turn on gear two or not gear two, but command rate two is where I'm at. And I'm again, 37, 33, uh, 14, 14, 14, still running 39. And then my TRFC, I've gotten it down to 374. I'm running this kit at 1.47 volts. So the most my motherboard pushes out to it is like 1.482 that I've seen uh, using hardware info. And I say all that to say this, um, the end result was phenomenal. The same exact hardware minus the RAM, right? So the same CPU, the same GPU, same everything. I just dropped that in there and I was able to just see a significant increase in FPS for me. So my highs on a 6900 XT, the highest I've seen it has been 311 when I went to the Gulag. When I'm in the map, just running around, just chilling, I've seen as high as like 260 FPS at 1440p. Um, I always use the same custom settings as normal textures. Um, sometimes I go to low textures, uh, but really it's normal textures, high filtering and low everything else with the bullet impacts on. And those are my custom settings. It's nothing crazy. But again, I've gotten 311 in the Gulag. When I'm in the Gulag with the 3090, the highest I've gotten is like 295. Um, and what, if I'm not recording, which is, this is kind of like the shitty part. Um, if I had a second PC setup, like a two PC recording setup, cause I have one PC to benchmark, turn it off. And then I have another PC to benchmark. Right. But I haven't linked the two to have one on while the other one is also on recording it. I might look into that, but when I'm not recording, those are my, those are my frames that I get when I am recording. Um, it usually drops by about 20 to 30 FPS. So it does drop a lot when I'm recording, but it's still much higher. So my average, um, when I'm running through the map with my default settings that I talked about is like 180 is like my lows. But I remember when I was like happy to get 167, right? Like that was, if that was like my averages, I was happy, but like my lows now are 180. And when I go into downtown, I think the lowest I can even see it, like my 1% or like 160, like that'll be like a 1% when I'm in downtown uh, and a lot of stuff is happening. So, and my 0.1% probably are like 140 versus, like I said, my averages um, being in that 160 range. My my lows were down in the 120, 130, you know, with my 0.1%. And my highest I would see back in the day was like 210, 215. Um, and that's during gameplay. And that's, you know, obviously not recording or anything. That's just the highest I would get. Uh, whereas now I'll be in certain areas of the map where it's not, there's not a lot going on and I'm definitely getting like 260 FPS, 250 FPS, getting into gunfights at over 200 FPS is, is, is amazing. So I know everybody doesn't have this level of graphics card, so it's not really a video geared for every single person, but if you're not getting the most out of your system, um, they're already hard to come by these these RTX 3000 cards and these the newer the better more desirable Radeon cards the 6700 XT is there all day and the 6900 XT is also there but it's also super expensive right but if you do want to try to max out your system I would definitely recommend getting a kit of B diram um, especially if your main game is Warzone or anything that requires really low latency because you can tune it a lot better. So again, tying it back, it's more like the K SKUs of CPUs. So when you think about it that way, it's like getting a 10900K or 11900K where you can overclock it and change some things to it. Um, and it scales well with voltages. After a certain point, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't push past 1.5 volts. 
even though on my Corsair kit, my Asus, uh, was it the ROG Strix Z590? That was the default uh, voltage it set my RAM uh, to run in at those timings that you see in in previous like 10900K videos. So it's just one of those things that was, it was really, to me, it was really high. And the timings weren't like amazing. It was like, <clears throat> it was 15, 20, 20, 42. Uh, versus 14, 14, 14. Like these timings are much tighter. Uh, and the TRFC was like 700 something. So it wasn't even like that was better versus 374 now. I know for some people this is just like, what is all this? But as you start to look into how to tune your RAM, these are numbers that are going to pop up a lot. Um, but yeah, hopefully this video helps shed some light and maybe has you looking in a different direction versus I need a GPU upgrade when you could spend 120 bucks and get 16 gigs of B die Ram, uh, tune that and get more FPS than you possibly would have gotten from jumping up to a whole nother generation of, of GPU. So if you end up doing this, let me know. Or if you have really good Ram right now, or you have B die or already knew about this, uh, sound off in the comments. We'll, we'll have a conversation about it, but yeah, it was, a. Uh, it was a pain to set up. I had to run a lot of mem test. Um, it sucks to have to wait like, you know, 15 minutes and then all of a sudden you get an error. So you have to wait it through and then, yeah. But again, definitely worth it because now I've got some stable clocks. I've got everything leveled out. I even on the 12900K, I reduced it down to five gigahertz on all cores and four gigahertz on the E cores uh, just to keep the temperatures down. That thing is a beast in three quarters, man. Uh, because I was able to get it. If, if I wanted to run it at, 5.1 gigahertz, it was taken close to 1.3 volts. Um, so with the power limit, you know, removed, that was really, it would, it would spike up to like 90 degrees sometimes in gaming situations. Like if, if I were loading shaders or something where the CPU was getting hit really hard, 90 degrees was easy versus now I'm back down to about where my 10, 900 K was where if I'm doing shaders, it's like 72, 73 degrees maybe maybe a spike to 80 but nowhere near and i'm also able to run it at 1.25 volts um and it's been pretty stable so i think the highest when doing multiple passes i did the the throttle test on Citibench. it held the clocks uh the the five gigahertz all 10 minutes and it's not the best test but you know it held the clocks for 10 minutes and the highest i saw was like 96 degrees and I wasn't running my cooler on full blast. So I was using the regular conditions of the Corsair H150i. Um, so y'all be easy. I'll catch you in the flip and get that B-Die RAM if you want that extra performance. Um, just weigh it out. Yeah, I can't guarantee because I don't have any lower end cards to test it with. Um, I can't guarantee that it's going to jump up your performance. But for me and in my situation, it definitely did. Uh, so anywhere from 30 to 70 FPS is what I'm getting higher. So I'll catch you on the flip. Holla.